Welcome back to the Rainbow Six Pro League Finals live from ESL's Arena in Katowice. I'm Matt Andrews, having a great time hosting our finals as I have the great pleasure of doing, but also the pleasure of bringing to you some news about a great documentary, which I think is of interest not just to everybody who's in the Rainbow Six community, but I think anybody who is an esports fan, whether a long-time esports fan or whether you're just getting used to this idea of competitive gaming and wanting to see what it's like for the lives of those people involved. And I mean, by that, I mean the most important people involved, the players. On the desk with me we have Canadian still who's working so hard today on this desk kicks uh, back from uh, casting duties taking some time at the on desk and Alex here Alex Remy who is the brand director of Rainbow Six Siege the man who brought us this game with his amazing team at Ubisoft Montreal Alex we're having a good day aren't we I'm having a blast actually yeah the amazing game so far like uh, Brazil is uh, absolutely surprising and uh, yeah I think so uh, yeah can't wait to be uh, the last match of the day and of course when games are coming out now, now that esports is this great big global thing, when games are being made and games are being released, there's always talk, particularly when it comes to shooters, there's always talk about is this going to be a new esport? Can we make this an esport? Some developers try and make their games an esport. Ultimately, of course, that's down to you, the community, whether or not people adopt it, whether or not people want to play it competitively. Why was esports important for you before Rainbow Six Siege was released? Uh, the, the moment we started the game about uh, four years and a half ago, I mean, we because we went for a shooter 5v5, we knew we wanted something competitive, right? Uh, the whole design of the game, the whole structure of the game uh, is based for and, and made for competition. Uh, then the fact that it became and is becoming an esports uh, uh, is obviously, as you mentioned, 100% based on community, talents like you guys and, and players, and that's you guys making it happen, making today happen. And uh, I think the documentary that we'll uh, yeah. uh, talk a little bit about is exactly about those people, those talents uh, that are making that possible. So that's, uh, I hope, a little gift uh, that we can give you guys. Yeah, I think it is a gift to, to people who are in it and, and also the community who, you know, as you say, brought you to this point. I think it's fair to say, though, while we're talking about Rainbow Six becoming an eSport, I think it's fair to say you got off to a bad start, not with competitions, but as a game that was ready. We all know that Rainbow Six now is quite a different beast to what it was when it came out in December 2015. Yeah, I think it's uh, fair to say that we are at a much better place today than we were when we launched. Uh, we launched uh, a year and a half ago again, and the, we received sort of uh, mixed reviews for all the good reasons. I mean, uh, based uh, connectivity issues on servers, etc. And I think uh, even though we're not totally and 100% out of the uh, trouble zone, shall I say, uh, and Operation Health, by the way, is exactly about uh, uh, continuing and pushing those, uh, uh, those fixing and uh, uh, repairing on the game, but uh, I think a year and a half after launch, we are at much, much better place. Uh, I think it shows on the gameplay, it shows also on the scene, uh, the growth, uh, uh, the maturity of the plays that we're seeing today are much different from what we saw about a year ago. Now, as you mentioned, Operation Health, that's going to have quite a big impact on the games. And more news about that tomorrow. That's coming up in a panel between the semifinals and finals during our Pro League tomorrow. Uh, kicks. Yes. You've had a different career than pretty much everybody, uh, with, your, yeah. with very few exceptions uh, in Rainbow Six, having seen it from both sides of those desks over there where the players sit, and these ones where we have the pleasure of casting the games. But as a player, mm -hmm. if we go back to your memories of like the first year of Siege when you were competing, what stands out for you? Well, I think the thing that stands out for me the most was uh, Season 1, where we were coming to the finals as a North America team, going up against Europe, and we had no idea what to expect. We we weren't really sure what was going to happen. We, it could be that we totally destroy Europe, or Europe totally destroys us, and it all came down to meta development within their own you know confined regions. So the first international land, we went there, and we got dumpstered. We got absolutely destroyed, but we came back and we learned and adapted and now and then we formed uh, a meta in North America which went on to win thanks to uh, Troy here went on to win uh, season 3 finals and then the uh, invitational finals which you know I think this it all started at season 1 where we absolutely got destroyed. Well, that was benefit for everybody. <laughs> Thanks for taking the I bullet. Took the, I took a bullet for the team. I mean, the whole team did really though. I mean, what we saw from VG just now was that was kind of that that team, you know, um, Snake Nades, one of those players who was involved in that first season where we got a little bit destroyed. Canadian, as aside from kicks being, you know, the factor to your entire success as a competitive uh, player. No, but uh, <laughs> as a player, of course, season, uh, well, the whole of the first year was a, a great big growth for you as a personality in the stream and as a comp uh, competitor. Yeah. So season one, I started out. I was play with like some friends I ended up leaving the team to join a new one because I wasn't really happy with the roster I didn't think we could win stuff like that um, anyways 
I wasn't the best player then. I, I was still the same way where I focused really on strategy and stuff like that, but as far as killing people, I wasn't very good at it, uh, put it that way. <laughs> and I've kind of progressed and improved as a player like that over time, and then as like how I understand the game and whatnot from playing with different teams, playing against different teams, and like Kick said, um, when they lost season one, it actually was like a big thing for NA where all these teams started to play differently because they're like, oh, you does this and it works really well. So when they started doing that, we started picking up on it. And then actually season two, I joined their we, team. We played together, we yeah. were teammates. Yeah. We, weren't, we weren't especially like close teammates though. I mean, it was a, that was a weird, weird kind of. Oh, we're gonna have an awkward moment here where he goes, "Well, you were my best friend. What, what team <laughs> we were like, what? What? I, like we went out? What? What?" <laughs> yeah, our team there was more of like a business kind of thing. Where it was yeah. like, we're he's, here to win. He's yeah, a good well, player. Yeah, well, it's competition. It's serious competition. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You're actually get it done. Um, uh, in terms of serious competition, you know, we've had three pro league seasons last year. There are the Go Fours as well, of course. The first game was a uh, the first game competitively. The first round of the first pro league was at IEM in Katowice in the Expo Hall there, which was a fantastic way to kick things off. And then all of that first year culminated, of course, back at the start of February, just gone with the amazing Six Invitational, which we collectively have so many happy memories of it. If you were in Montreal and you came, thank you very much. And if you're one of the millions of people who watched it, thank you for joining us for the Six Invitational. Why was it so important for Ubisoft to have that celebration of a year with a big world championships? Well, mainly because for us, it was a, a, a big signal uh, to bring the, the competition and the game back home. Uh, it meant a lot to that whole team of people that have been dedicating like, you know, like their day, day after day, uh, four years in a row to bring that game uh, where it is today and having uh, uh, the biggest competition of the year back home, back in Montreal, where all the dev team and all the people that contributed to the game like gathered in one single place uh, for the biggest event of the year. It meant uh, absolutely a lot to us. It was so exciting. It was one of the one yeah. of the greatest things I've, I've had the pleasure of working on. And then Kicks, of course, you'd already stopped uh, playing. You'd moved over to casting. We'd had you in previous seasons. What was it like for you then, not competing at the World Championships, but on a casting desk in front of that audience? Well, obviously there was a lot of you know. Um, mostly for me, it was just I missed being on the on the on the table up, upstairs, you know, on the stage with yeah. all the all the other players uh, in front of the audience. You know, it was a first time experience really for me. I mean, it was uh, I think 500 people it was a lot of guys. Yeah. Um, but I, it it really worked out, and uh, I was really humbled and privileged to be a part of it overall. And the best part about the entire event and all of these LAN events really is that you get to meet everybody from the scene yeah. you get to meet all of the fans you get to meet all of the players you get to meet all the coaches and then all of the talents like you matt oh, it's always nice to hang out with you with these um but uh yeah that's that's really the main takeaway for me is at each LAN event you get to hang out with everybody and, and that's one of the aspects that i absolutely love about uh, those events that we do across and throughout the whole year is uh, and i don't know how much people who watch the stream realize how close uh, the talents the players and the community members are yeah. i mean we get to know now each other more and more i mean it's been three four times even sometimes five times that uh we hear and uh, yeah. we either you know meet and, and and do workshops and have so many conversations about the game and, and the scene and i think uh, i hope uh, that that mini uh, film that we did uh, is gonna uh, yeah. you know give a little bit of a light about that that uh, community and those people you guys uh, and and furious also who's uh, one of the uh, member uh, featured in the documentary it, it was an incredible event. My, my sort of overwhelming memory of the Six Invitation was much like you've just said, Kicks, just meeting people, yeah. having you know fans of the game come up and say hello and how much they've loved what we've done all this year, which is absolutely fantastic. And then just seeing the support from that incredible audience live in the room, the baguettes, the flags, the love between the French team, oh. seeing Vitality singing their anthem on stage, uh, seeing Elevate stomp all over Vitality, which nearly ruined all of our careers as analysts <laughs> when we all thought it was going to go the full distance on best of threes and it went 10-0. Um, but then seeing Elevate, like Vitality still clapping Elevate when they had been stomped on in the World Championship final and Elevate saying to Vitality, no, get up on this stage with us. That was all incredible things. Absolutely amazing. Canadian, any, any particular memories for you from the Six Invitational having gone into it as the reigning season three champions? Well, Winning, obviously. Uh, yeah, well, there it was, was that. was quite the experience. Uh, the, just the energy of the crowd and everything, though. Like, not the most gigantic crowd, but still, like, sizably bigger than the past lands. The biggest one in, uh, yeah, you the biggest competed one Rainbow in Six. front of and, live yeah, and the biggest stream as well, you know? So, yeah, the agree. biggest audience in both regards. And just, like, the energy of it. Like, you guys can obviously tell uh, me on the desk I'm not full of energy and screaming and going crazy, but 
when I'm playing with that crowd, I'm a completely different person where I am screaming at the top of my lungs going insane. Funny you should mention that. You didn't know we were going to do this, Canadian, but have a listen. 50 push seconds. Push What's right behind, twitch that dead, diffuser nice. down. He's close. Okay, okay. Oh, no! Oh, 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 hold on, guys. 5v3. Hold on, hold on. Your okay, your diffuser yeah. down indoor. Let's go! Oh, nice. Keep it up. Focus, 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 focus. Focus, 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 focus. Oh, stairs, north or stairs. He got me, north or stairs. Just hold, boys. Play diffuser barb, down. Play barb. We have a cam up. Play barb. Um, yeah, I'm checking drum cam. 15 seconds, dude. Okay, go help. Go help, Troy. Let's go. And then, then beep, 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 beep. One shot, one shot. Yeah! That's got you a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, that was... Uh, Have you relived that moment many times? I actually don't remember a word I said. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Playing that, like I, I, I said, play Barb. There. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> but apparently I Join did. Help. <laughs> Anyways, though, uh, kind of shows. I don't even remember what went on. I was yeah. just playing the match. I was in the zone, screaming at the top of my lungs. And as you can see, that's not normally how I am. But yeah, in true. the competitive uh, environment with the energy of the crowd and everything, it gets you going. Yeah. yeah, I can see that matters to you. I'm glad that it does. It was a world championship. Yeah. So there we have this documentary featuring the lives of people working up towards that six invitational. Canadians in it, Kix is in it, and Furious G is in it as well. Incredible player for Vitality, who if you remember last time we were here in this studio in Katowice was at the end of season three. Uh, I interviewed him when Team Vitality had won the Xbox uh, Pro League there. He was in, you know, in tears on stage. So were the rest of his team. I've talked about this in sort of other interviews we've done. That moment will always stay with me when he talks about the, uh, the commitment mm -hmm. and uh, the compromises, you know, how much he, it cost him really in family terms and all of that sort of thing to, uh, to compete at that level and get it. And then, as I said, they, you know, they got stomped on in the final, but what an incredible final it was. So Furious G's in it, Canadian is in it, and Kix is in it as well. And it looks a bit like this. Practicing with teams online versus playing with them at LAN, it's like, it's your life, and then it's the greatest moment of your life. On s'entraîne tous les soirs, jusqu'à minuit, une heure, deux heures du mat, à travailler les stratégies des adversaires et à travailler notre propre stratégie pour voir ce qu'on peut apporter pour les contrer. Bonjour les gars, c'est parti, c'est le moment. I'm not a people person. I am in the exact opposite job to who I am as a person. It's really weird. It's almost ironic. I like playing the game and I want to be the best at it. And I'm not happy unless I'm the best at it. Let's go! I'm in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen. She has a fucking solid. Leo, stop! Siege, the rising scene, will be with you live tomorrow on this stream, straight after our grand final. That is where you'll be able to get to see this incredible documentary for the first time. That was a little bit of an extended preview. I don't think anybody's seen that version of it before, but we've got the whole thing. It's 20 minutes long. That'll be with you after the grand final tomorrow. Furious G, hello to you, by the way, from all of us here at Pro League Finals. Casting on the French stream now, uh, retired at the Six Invitational. He's working as a caster on the French stream, so we love having you still with us, Furious G, and working so hard with Team Vitality. I know we're going to see some exciting things from them in the future as well. It's a good piece of work, Alex. Your team have made a, a great event there and I then shown a fantastic event of it as well. Canadian, I won't go too much into the things we see in that documentary, but what's one thing that I think is very interesting that maybe many people don't know, uh, you were a hockey player, ice hockey player, and then you transitioned into esports. Yeah, so growing up my whole life, I played hockey. I think uh, I quit around 13 or 14, um, and that's all I did. I, I went to school, I played hockey. I, I woke up, went to school, got, got home, went to hockey for like four hours every day. Um, it was all I did. And I had to end up quitting because of concussions and it was affecting my school, it was affecting like just my whole life in general. So I ended up quitting. And as the competitive person that I am, um, I got really bored without being able to play hockey. I, 
I didn't know what to do. I wasn't really in the happiest place in my life because I kind of lost, like... So you stopped that before you found something to replace yeah, it with? I stopped. That must have been I, really hard. I, I definitely did not know what to do. I just, like, would go to school, I'd come home, and I'd be like, what do I do? And uh, my brother always played video games, and I, I would just kind of watch him. I didn't really care for video games at the time. I just kind of watch him, see him play. And then it got to the point where I was like, well, I, like, get competitive with my brother and try to be better than him. And then he, like, joined some competitive things on uh, other games. And then it eventually got to the point where it's like, I wanted to compete in tournaments. And Siege came out, and now I'm playing, like, world championships, championships and stuff. And like I said, I'm a really competitive person, so it goes into everything I do. I'm not happy unless I'm the best, so. <laughs> Kicks, that's an attitude that I think you... Could agree with you were regarded as the best player in the world. I, I don't think I was ever the best player in the world. But back when I did play, I, I did have the same exact mentality that uh, Canadian has, and that a lot of other players do have in the pro scene. I've talked to quite a bit of them, and it's it's really it is a case of yes, if you're not on the best team, if you're not playing the best level of the game, then sometimes it just it just not worth it for a player. I mean, I know Jarvis, uh, a new player, a new addition to your roster, is similar in that regard. Yeah, yeah, we'll look forward to seeing what Continuum bring us. Yeah. In the future, hopefully better than this season. <laughs> yeah. you'll, I think you'll. I think you'll definitely do better than this season. I think you'll probably. Be, I, I look forward to seeing you at land. I'm confident as well. Yeah. We'll see. Alex, you must be very pleased with what your documentary team have made. It shows a genuine sort of human side to esports, and also like so many fans of this game will be really happy with what it reminds them of. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you often see uh, uh, you often see the, the matches, the stats, uh, the what's on the stream, but uh, you don't often get to actually meet sort of like behind the scenes and the people that are there. And uh, I hope like selecting like those three unique uh, profiles and unique uh, players. Uh, uh, Ex-player turned caster, uh, you uh, like the sort of uh, rising uh, rising young star and uh, furious sort yeah. of retiring at the, at the same time and we had the chance to follow you guys for about three months a little bit before the invitational all through invitational which is the main uh, at the event that we follow and then afterwards like we uh, we send the team to uh, actually go uh, to, to to meet you guys and i think it's uh, it sheds really a, a nice human uh, portrait about all of you guys and yeah. i hope like people will enjoy because uh, they, they they get to see a, a sort of uh, attitude that you get and, and where you're coming from and your journey with the game. So I think it's uh, really, really cool. So thank you for being you. Actually. Thank you for making it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a little worried. I haven't actually watched it yeah. yet, so I don't know what it. Is. I don't know what it well, says about Kicks me. asked me, should I watch it before we talk <laughs> about it and, uh, before it gets released? No, you're all right, Kicks. It's a really right, affectionate good. piece of work. I think it's uh, a really affectionate work from Ubisoft to show the lives of these players in a, in a way that the personalities of these guys that we know so well in this game and how much you know they matter to us as a community and how much we care for good competition in Rainbow Six. But I also have the pleasure of working on other esports events all over the world. And I think anybody who's into esports will enjoy watching this because I think, it, as you've just said, Alex, it does show you a bit you know, behind the scenes of players. Uh, if, if anybody watches some of the videos I make, I like to show behind the scenes of events and how they sort of come together technically. What you've done is show behind the scenes of like the players the people, who matter yeah. and how it matters to them. It's Siege, the rising scene. Where are we going to get to see it? Tomorrow, right after the grand finals. Yep, it'll also be available on uh, the Rainbow Six YouTube channel Absolutely. as well. So if you don't get a chance to watch it after the grand finals tomorrow because you're just exhausted from... Uh, 20 hours of Siege this weekend, or whatever it is we end up clocking up after we get to the end of the Grand Final. If you're completely exhausted, it'll definitely be available for you. And I think you're going to get to see it on some TV along the way as well, because I know a few people who are interested in spreading it a bit more widely too. Siege, the rising scene, a 20-minute documentary with Canadian Kicks and Furious G. Don't miss that. And also, don't go very far, because it's our final quarter-final time coming up. G-Bots and Flipside Tactics looking to play a Brazilian team in tomorrow's semi-finals. Were they expecting that? Were they expecting each other? Let's find out just after this. <laughs>